normally I'm speaking in technical conferences and then it's not that enthusiastic. <laughs> so, uh, but I brought some gold with me just to give you some motivation. Um, here is some gold. Um, it, it, only five people can get that gold afterwards. Uh, just to, if it's a good speech, you will get some gold from me. Enterprise architecture or architecture at all. So maybe I leave one here. <laughs> so for the after stage. Um, but the, the, I have an issue with the term data, and therefore I'm going to to that presentation. I have only 15 minutes, but I want to give you some ideas, and I have to pick up where is it the pointer. And as I know now that I have to point in this direction instead of this one, I hope it works. <laughs> a short introduction about me. My name is uh, Peter Lieber. I'm enterprise architect. That means building companies is my passion. I have uh, 14 uh, companies. I would name myself not serial entrepreneur, more a parallel entrepreneur, because if a company works, why I should sell it? <laughs> so therefore, I'm coming to stay, and that's my personal passion. I'm here the president of the Österreichische Gewerbeverein. It's the oldest organization in Austria. So tradition is also in my blood. It's not all about new entrepreneurs, new businesses, but also about economies. And I think about magic of innovation in context of insurance, like, it's like, huh? Insurance business? They are not even afraid of anything. And they are resilient and no problem uh, with the market since decades or a uh, hundred years. Um, but I believe that to be really successful with innovation or business model innovation, you need things I would name a model. And I think if we go for the new gold, everybody says the data is the new gold. And I think that's not 100% truth. And, why we, and I want to tell you why we failed. Because there is a model called data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. And especially in the German region, um, knowledge is translated with Wissen. And the Germans and the Austrians thought, hey, it's okay, we have data, information, and knowledge, but no, nobody thought about the wisdom. And this is what is missing in the European region. Are we really clever in the energy crisis to pay the highest prices? US is cheap, Russia is cheap, Asia Pacific is cheap, only in Europe we pay the price. What we have done wrong, we are not wise. That's our challenge. We think we know everything. Um, this, this model, um, in preparation, I do the Wikipedia stuff and research where it's coming from. It's a concept from the 50s, so it's not new. And in the information industry, it's even uh, less than from the 50s. Uh, but we thought about, we need to have some knowledge management, or we need requirements management to know our knowledge management. And now we are talking about data. Hey, data is the base. Nothing else. You, nothing means the data. You need to get the data to collect something, information. And from information you get knowledge, and then you need the wisdom what to do with that. And now we are talking about data. I think it is far not enough. Um, just to remind you about this model, I'm new, you're all experts and knowledge carriers. This is the real uh, knowledge pyramid. And you see wisdom very often forget, forgotten. We're stuck with the knowledge. Um, but to have a transition for understanding, you start maybe with data, but I think it's totally vice versa. You have to understand the principles that you know what to do with the data. And so maybe that direction is wrong. You have to find, think about a different approach. And so if we stuck with this model and just stop at the knowledge level and think about data and stuck with the knowledge level, then there is something where we have a challenge. And therefore, I extended the knowledge model, a model and say, okay, before we come to data, we need measurements. We need some facts out of the measurements. And there are old gates to observe, to sample, to compare, adjust, and focus. But the challenge is that wisdom is still poor. <laughs> data is huge, wisdom is poor. And if we do it in the other direction, more from the sales perspective, we talk about sales funnels, having a lot of inputs in and a knowledge coming out, the contract, the customer coming out, and I think it's maybe a clever approach to think a little bit upside down, not to become the data slavery. Uh, think upside down and just change the approach. It's not very innovative, but maybe clever, I don't know. Um, and say, okay, we have a huge funnel of information, but we want to generate wisdom. And not everything that we have there is important to get that wisdom. So we want to go away from being a slave 
and find a kind of model-based approach. So not only think about the data itself, but think about the structure. And if you go to a data scientist, he always will ask you, what is to propose? What do you want to achieve with that? Then he can help you to find that. But it's all about what do you want? And maybe better think before you collect data what you want to achieve with that. Because currently we are creating graves of data. Millions. I'm in the automotive industry as well, and autonomous driving is all about collecting stupid data. And it's saved, it's stored. We are just creating tons of things you never use again because you just try to get the wisdom out of it, but you keep the data. Why keep the data if you have already the wisdom? And so I think you need to th uh, think more about the architecture of the data, architecture of wisdom, architecture of knowledge. And so what you need, and we heard about it yesterday and today in the morning, the minimum, what you need is the awareness from the management. You need the chance to fail. There's a huge opportunity if you have just data and no knowledge and no wisdom that you have get nothing out of it. But you waste a lot of time, you waste a lot of efforts, clever people, maybe robots, maybe artificial intelligence could help you, maybe. Uh, but if you don't have the awareness of the management, and especially in the industry, they are not happy about the word failure. Failure is something, we don't want to go in a failure direction. We only want to succeed. We want to be the most successful persons. We, and therefore, we, they try to split it out of their organization, but try to get the, the pros in, the, the cons out. And I think if you don't have the awareness of the management, if you don't have the allowance to fail, forget the data, forget the knowledge, forget the wisdom, stay with your business model as the last hundred years. You need attention, because if you don't get attention, it's not interesting to collect, to find, to dig in. You need the architects, people that are aware of similar situations to identify principles, not try to understand the data itself, try the principle, uh, to understand the principle behind. Then you need architecture to have a reproducible thing, not do it once, Try to make it reproducible, scalable, re reproducible. And of course, you need architecture management, the five A's. Additionally, um, as you are companies that are working, hopefully, <laughs> you have not failed so far, um, the thing is that you have different levels of maturity. And the same is maturity as your organization, maturity of the knowledge that you gain, the maturity of the wisdom. And so, in the, I have borrowed from CMMI, that's a software-based approach, but it also works for the domain uh, we are talking about. It's all about information, of course. Uh, now we are talking about data, why? Um, but in reality, we are trying to get to this level to have it quality, quali qualitatively main, managed and maybe already optimized. But we are here. If you start with data, you start with, who surprise. I found the benefit. But be aware of these maturity levels to achieve this 5E. So that's not readable, that's therefore I jump over. If you want to have the slides, of course you get it after the presentation, so you will see the details that are not readable here. <laughs> um, so if you are modeling, so not the data, if your modeling and understanding of your data is helpful for your organization, then you will get others into this modeling approach. To understand, okay, the high level abstraction of that. Hopefully with our product, I hope. Um, but of course, there are a lot of other modeling tools in the market. So then you come to the level of collaboration. Collaboration means you are doing it together. It's not do it your own for yourself. You try to have more than one principle. And it's also afterwards for the pitches, one plus one could be less than one. <laughs> But one plus one could be three, could be hundred, could be thousand. And this is the effect that you expect if you deal with data and knowledge and wisdom at the end. The next step is to publish the information. If you have knowledge or wisdom, and maybe this is a, a best kept secret, what is the only resource in the market that you share that multiplies knowledge and wisdom? If you don't share, it goes down. If you share, you have more. It's the only resource in the world that gets multiplied if you share. Gold does not multiply. 
but knowledge multiplies. And I th think this is a very important stage. Publish this, share it with others, go to others and find out and reflect if it's really helpful also for the world. Um, if you have this regulatory principles, certification principles, GPTR we heard about, in, I named some automotive or aviation standards, then it makes sense also to think about regulated dealing with the models, to find out what is the scoping, what is the right scoping, what fits in, the, in my industry and in the market, what is allowed from the regulatory perspective. And last but not least, of course, if we are already delivering value, go on, then it works. So these are the new way to dig for gold. Gold is not endless. Oil is not endless. Gas is not endless. Knowledge and wisdom is. And that's the story I wanted to tell. Any questions and answers? I have four minutes left. We have minimum one question. The one dollar question, you know that. Yeah? The first one gets a dollar. If not, happy that you have uh, heard my speech. You have been quiet, so it must be interesting. Thank you for attending and hopefully enjoy the entire magic of innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you.